loving the world. If we're ever in an age where we've got access to the world, it's today. If ever there's a word from God that we need in this day and hour, it is this one. I watch the world. I look at it. I watch its mindsets. I watch its ways of thinking. I watch its attitudes, its fascinations, its worldviews. And I watch. I watch how it impacts the church. As a pastor, I'm constantly aware and concerned that we maintain a healthy relationship with the world. If we're a church that is carrying out the mandate of the risen Christ to go to the nations, to touch this world with the gospel, you know what's going to happen? I recognize what's going to happen. If we are an evangelistic church and if we're taking the gospel out, guess where we got to go? We got to go into the world. And guess what happens when you go into the world? You rub shoulders with the world. And the more we're in con we are supposed to be in contact with this world. But I, I understand this. There is a balance. There is a balance that we have to maintain. We have to remove ourselves from the world, not be of the world, not be tainted by the world's mindsets. And yet at the same time, we need to be in the world. And we need to be salt and light in that world. We need to be touching it and yet not embracing its ways. We have to be careful that in our attempts to reach the world, we're not trying to become like the world, or whether we try to or not, it's not having an effect on us that is ungodly and unbiblical and right at the heart of what John is dealing with here. So, look, love not the world. The devil is the ruler of this world. This worldly system has a ruler. It's not without a rule. It has structure. It has order. There are principalities and powers. There are evil dominions that are set up and structured. There are rulers. The chief ruler is the devil himself. There is order. There is design. There is a system that is designed all around us that is anti-God. It should not surprise you when the world attacks Christ or truth or Christians. It's organized to do just that. That's what Scripture tells us. John 16, 11, The ruler of this world is judged. 1 John 4, 4, Little children, you're from God, you will overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. The devil is not only said to be the ruler of this world, he's in the world. He and all of his hordes and his ranks, they're all over. 1 John 5.19, we know that we are from God. The whole world lies in the power of the evil one. He's got power. He rules over it. and He's got power in his rule. Revelation 12.9, the great dragon was thrown down, the ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. You need, to, you need to get this. He rules it. He powerfully rules it. He's in it. And he does it through deception. He holds this. You have to know this. We know this, right? It, it ought not to surprise you that all around us there is an anti-God system and it's being carried out by people who have been deceived. They don't know. Their eyes have been blinded. Isn't that what we hear in Scripture? So, what's John's message to us in 1 John 2.15? Don't love this. Don't embrace this. Don't desire it. Don't go after it. Don't live for this human system that's steeped in sin, ignorant of God, dominated by the devil. Don't embrace it. Don't love it. Don't go that way. We're talking about a system of attitudes and mindsets that are contrary to God the Father. Notice verse 15 again. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, notice this. You have something here 
that is mutually exclusive. The two can't go together. If you love the world, the love of the Father is not in Him. And and the love of the Father here is very clearly speaking about our love for God, the Father. Our love for Him, not His for us. I say it's clear because the love of the Father is opposite to an individual's love of the world. Both of these are about what we love. Whether we love the world or whether we love the Father. Love for the Father and love for the world are two loves that are at odds with each other. They don't go together. John is saying they are mutually exclusive. They cannot exist together in the same person at the same time. Both cannot hold sway in your heart. That's what he's saying to us. You are controlled by one or controlled by the other. You cannot be controlled by both. If you say, I love God, well then you're going to love what God wills. I mean, it's just total hypocrisy to say, I love God, and God says, okay, I want you to do this, and you say, no, I don't love that. Jesus Himself said it. If you love Me, keep My commandments. It's very plain how they go together. So let's put all this together. When John commands us to not love the world, he has in mind the system of mankind organized in rebellion against God, and he has specifically in mind the attitudes of this system. Don't take them on yourself. Don't embrace those attitudes. To love the world is by John's definition to love what is opposed to God. Do you all see that? Love for the world and love for the Father are incompatible. So, Christians, here we are. I mean, think about this. Jesus does not say, build yourself monasteries and convents. He doesn't tell us that. He says, go. Where are we going? You know where we're going? We're going right out there where all these mindsets and attitudes are prevalent, hold sway, where they're controlled by the devil and he is energizing these very attitudes. That's where he sends us. But then he also say, he that is with us is greater than he that's in the world. Well, we don't go out alone. Did he not say, lo, and I will be with you always to the end of the world? You see, we go with Him. Still, we need the instruction. Don't love the world. Neither the things that are in the world. We're in the world. We're not of the world. And this is battle. We need to be in that world, but other than the world. Not like that world. It's, it's all-out battle. And because what happens is when we get out into the world, we're exposed to the temptations of the world. Jesus wants us in the world. He said, John 17, 11, I'm no longer in the world, but they're in the world. And in 17, 15, He says, I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. In other words, I don't ask you to take them out of the world, which means what? Leave them in it. Only He prayed for us. Protect them from the one who is the ruler of this world. From his, remember how he rules? By deception. Protect them from that. Well, John comes along and he says, Look, I don't want you to fall into that temptation to embrace the ways of this world's thinking. This is mindset. This is a great tension. The truth is that the world is a massively powerful system. It's a massively powerful, uh, just, it's a force to be reckoned with. It has mindsets, it has attitudes, and it just streams at us. It's like putting a pressure on us all the time. The moon's out there and it's pulling on the oceans. We get tides. The world's like that to, to Christians. It's just, it's pushing, it's pulling. We feel that on a regular, it's, it's this powerful persuasive system. It's ruled and commanded by the mightiest of the fallen angels and every Christian feels the force of it, the pull of it. The world is a force that you and I as Christians must reckon with. We must. It comes at us. Look, 
you, you want to epitomize the world. You want to you know where the world speaks at us loudly. What are its channels? Where do its influences come at us? When we're talking about an evil system that is anti-God, by and large, every single movie that comes out of Hollywood is controlled by this system. They control Hollywood. Those little harmless movies that you think Disney makes, they are meant to brainwash your children with certain mindsets. And you better believe it. If you're not discerning enough to see it, you need to get some biblical discernment. They have an agenda. There is a message in those movies. They are not harmless. The world is seeking to pour its attitudes into our ears and eyes all the time. They by and large control the media. By and large this system that is satanically controlled, that we define as the world. It's out there. It's, there's control. The newspapers. Almost, almost all politics. If you think Republicans are the saviors of this world, again, you need discernment. It's anti-God. We need to be careful. We don't need to withdraw from the world. But you need to be wise and discerning. You say, well, you're saying that. You say politics. You say television. You say the movies. You say radio is, is this world that John's talking about. How do, how do we know that? Ladies and gentlemen, all you have to do is look at the anti-God agenda. That ought to be clear to you. It is the system that is against God. Some of you are well aware of the quote attributed to Martin Luther that goes something like this. If I profess with the loudest voice and the clearest exposition every portion of truth of God except precisely that little point which the world and the devil are at that moment attacking, I am not confessing Christ, however boldly I may be professing Christianity. Where the battle rages, the loyalty of the soldier is proved. And so be steady on all the battlefield besides is mere flight and disgrace to him if he flinches at that one point. Listen. The world has an agenda. It is ordered. It is structured. And it's anti-God. The devil controls the system. It's anti-God. And we're not to love it and we're not to embrace its ways of thinking. Brethren, what I read is Jesus saying this, take heart, I've overcome the world. I see Him saying that He's going to be with us. I see Him protecting us. I see Him saying, yeah, he that's in the world is pretty great, pretty strong. In fact, Jesus calls him the strong man, does He not? He's strong. But he that's in the world does not compare to he who is with us.